and I am fresh back from the shooting show and as you probably hear my voice still hasn't quite recovered from talking to all you fine people but to everyone that came up and said hello at the show thank you it's always nice to meet you meet you all anyway this morning I'm out um, for a look for a road here so just before I went up to the show the farmer on this particular farm texted me and said oh there's about four or five row out in the field here been out all week can you come down and see if you could um, knock one or two of those over so anyway going out this morning um, going out have a look and see if we can bump into one of them. It's um it needs to be dry at the moment, so hopefully it'll stay that way. And uh, as I say, yeah, it's just sort of before the first light hasn't got light properly yet. So we might also uh, bump into a, a fox out and about. Well I've got with me the um Hick Micro Alpex 4K. A lot of you guys came and snapped those units up at the show. Brilliant little night day scope. I've also got the um, Hick Habrox. We're Hick orientated today. So I've got the Hick Habrox with me as well to have a play around with. Not used those before, so I'm quite, quite uh, keen to get out and have a go with them. And also the males are M12. So nice little combination of bits and bobs to go stalking with. So hopefully we'll find something out and about. Right, that's two does down there, both 175 yards. I spotted them from the other end of the field and um, I managed to stalk along the hedgerow there and then in the end I had to come directly across the field so I had a safe backstop behind them. And uh, it's not an ideal way to approach deer straight out in the open like that, walking straight across the middle of a field, but I managed to just walk directly towards them. So if you imagine you're, you're walking along like Mr. Ben, you know, just tooling along with your legs going straight up into your body, you're only really looking like one kind of 
one blob on the landscape whereas if you go inside to side stuff spots you a lot easier so by walking directly towards them gives you half a chance so i took my chances walked in like I, say, I got to 175 yards and they started to look a little bit like they'd seen me so i didn't want to push it any more confident with the rifle on that shot the first one nicely broadside the second one was about to dash i think and um i managed to get that one just kind of caught her in a little bit but she ran a short distance and then went over so again two nice clean um kills there there was uh, another four or five that were just the other side of the hedge where they were laying in the hedge i could see them down by the bottom of the tree to the left a little bit and uh they went back out into the field and went along but they didn't go far enough out in the field for me to get another shot over the top of the hedge but um i think two would do us anyway it's a good it's good in roads to the to the numbers on here so yeah, farm should be pleased with that. So that's the second doe that ran. She only ran probably, uh, well, you can see, literally just from the hedge there, so 20, 30 yards. And there's the other one laid there. Well, that's the easy bit. It's getting cleaned up and back to the truck. This time of year with the lambing season just around the corner i like to sort of get out any opportunity i can the weather's been crap lately so uh opportunities have been pretty pretty slim on the ground but it seems to be dry this morning and um not sort of too windy or anything nasty i'm going to um head out into uh into the there's like a little valley just in front of me here i'm going to go and sit out in that and uh just wait for it to get light and just see see what comes along So I'm really impressed with these Habrox from Hick. Very, very sharp thermal image. You can spot stuff surprisingly far out with this and ID it as well. So, yeah, really good. me going for the rifle a bit quick. The moment I saw that in the thermal, I straight away thought that's got to be a fox going up there carrying something. And um, it was heading for the cover, so I had to be really quick. I got onto it and it turned out it was a badger carrying his breakfast home. So not what I thought at all. <laughs> Probably should have taken a few more moments just to have a better look through the, uh, through the spires. So another good thing about sitting out early morning like this is you can cover quite a, a big bit of ground. I can see quite a lot of the farm from up here. Gives me a good view. So I might not necessarily stretch the range down and shoot stuff at, at long distances from here, but uh, it, uh, it might sometimes just give me the intel of foxes to and fro in their habits and stuff and see where they're going to for another day. Um, that said, on a morning like this, it's, it's pretty still, so I'd quite happily uh, push, the, push the distance a bit. 
um, especially with this rifle this is the um, it's my custom 260 ram which most of you will, will recognize uh, got an element nexus version 2 sat on the top there brilliant brilliant scope that really good for for this sort of thing so yeah i'm quite confident that um if something did come out this morning then uh, i'd reach out and give a little tickle that sun's come up now and it's right in my face so um it's a bit hazy too so it will probably make shots quite difficult shooting down this way so I'm going to move over to the other side of the hill and um, have a look out that side of the farm get a good view out that way as well so uh, see what it's about Right, well there's not an awful lot about in the way of foxes, the morning's sort of dragged on a little bit now and I uh, don't think there's much shots in it now, but um, while I'm out I might as well have a little play, so there's a little patch of chalk just out above this gateway here, that is at 740 metres, so I don't know what that is, 740 plus about 75 so 800 odd yards um, so let's have a look see what we need to dial in for that so we've got the good old kestrel here so I'll just quickly put that in seven forty that gives me a correction of 23 to 23 I'm not going to worry too much about the wind because the wind's pretty much blowing straight down towards the target at the minute, coming from behind me. So, let's have a shot of that and just see, see if the, uh, the old rifle's still doing it what it should be, and me for that matter. Pretty near, not much wrong with that. Fraction high, perhaps a little bit a tad to the left. So, obviously, the wind's just pushed it a little bit, but still, that distance is not bad for a first shot in the morning. All right, well, keep eyes peeled and see if we can find a rabbit or something else. magpie out here 600 meters so about 660 yards we'll have a go see if we get anywhere near him so, so that is 15.93 so 16 MOA very very close but I guess they are pretty small at 600 600 meters <laughs> but still be nice we got it worth a go turn the turret back before we forget right one more shot I've got a very offensive piece of chalk out there just have a quick shot at that I think that'll do us for the day. Lovely. Brilliant. <laughs> nice way to round the morning off. Happy with that. Right. Time for a coffee. I'm just about to head out for a normal night's fox on one of my local sheep farms and I thought I'd just quickly, before I go out, just run through the kit that I'll normally take out with me. 
as you can see I've got the Fox Pro Prowler cooler there, nice little compact cooler there, it's ideal just to chuck in a bag and take out with you if it's a bit quiet you can have a go so if you pull something in. I've got a couple of power banks there, all pre-charged, a little multi-ended lead there, a knife obviously, a bit of baling twine, spare batteries, The, uh, the all the gear that I'm using tonight all runs on, on those batteries. I've also got a little bottle of a life drop spray, always handy to carry with you when you're out, especially on sheep farms and stuff. Um, a quick blast of that up the nose of um, of a lamb that's uh, struggling a bit and uh, they can just, just sort of give it that uh, little boost that might just bring it back from the brink of death. <laughs> um, roll of insulation tape, always handy if you've got to bodge something up. A light for hunting around looking for blood trails or uh, shot game, a pair of gloves. Um, load of ammunition, so I've got a magazine loaded up there, another four rounds there, so it's the equivalent of two magazines worth. Got the uh, Hick Habrox there for spotting, and then uh, going over to the rifle, obviously Mauser M12 there, sports match mounts on it, and um, the Hick Micro Alpex, and we've got a uh, light builds eye on there this evening, so I normally use either the light builds or the PBIR light builds on there at the minute. Um, and the moderator Harris bipod, that's the uh, that's the setup. Let's head out. Right, I'm going to jump out quickly and have a quick look here. There's a couple of fields just next to the farm here, which the farmer owns. Now these fields are quite close to where he's going to be lambing in, well, probably tomorrow or the day after actually, so imminently. Um, but you occasionally get one or two foxes out on this bit of ground. There's a few rabbits out here, so the foxes like to uh, have a little scoot round. So I'll just check that first, and uh, if there's nothing here, then we'll head straight on up to the farm and um, start doing the rounds. Hey, 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 hey. Well, that was a good start. I've um, come out of the car park bit there just by the road and um, walked out to this bit of ground, had a quick look round with the thermal. And sure enough, there's a fox hanging around. Well, at the time, he was going up and down this bank of this little river here. Um, so I walked along the path here, and he went out um, further back. He, when I, Thomas sort of got level with him, he was right over the other side of this field, probably about 300, give or take about 300 yards away. So I just give him a very soft little lip squeak, and it was just enough to get his attention. It's quite a still night tonight and uh, a few little lip squeaks had him trotting across the field lovely. In fact, he came into about 60 yards and uh, I had to stop him with a shout. Uh, he probably would have come 
well, he probably would have crossed the river actually, I don't know. He probably literally would have come up to within 10, 15 yards, I expect. Um, but yeah, as he came in, he got into about 60 yards and uh, I was happy that I had a nice safe shot because it's quite flat this ground so I wanted to get him in as close as possible. So I got him in nice and close and then just give him a little light and it took a few little shouts actually to get him to, to finally stop and he pulled up. I just put it straight to, I think actually I went straight for sort of like the neck, just basically centre mass and um, yeah, dead fox as you might expect from a 243 at 60 yards. So the next thing to do is to figure out how I get into that field to go and retrieve him. Um, I think I can get through back up the other end, so I'm going to have a walk back down that way and see if I can get over. Right, so I managed to get over onto the other bit of ground here. A bit of a hike to go and, uh, go and retrieve my fox, but he's just up ahead here. Right. There he is. He's a pretty big old boy as well. There you go, straight in the front of the chest there. That's a nice fox there. That. Now it's a dog fox. Excellent, that's a good start to the evening. Well, I've just got up to the farm and just parked up and had a quick look into the uh, into the first valley here. And I did spot a fox, but he'd just gone over the top of the hill. So there's obviously one or two about, but I literally, I've been here probably 10 minutes and the uh, the fog has just come in and um, it's all across this valley and uh, I, I don't think it's going to shift I think it's in for the evening I should have known really when I left home this evening there was a little bit of fog sort of hanging in the air and I very nearly turned around and went back and got the thermal uh, scope as well so I had the Alpex and the thermal scope but stupidly I didn't so here we are um, one fox for the evening and I'm gonna have to call it a night because I just can't see anything it's such a thick fog even the thermals uh, sort of reduced to probably 200 yards and uh, as far as the night vision goes 50 yards probably not even that 30 yards I expect and it's just bouncing back off that fog so there we go but anyway hopefully we've uh, done enough to entertain you for the episode I hope you've enjoyed it be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching